Hi everybody. So I have a bit of a more serious video for you guys today. As you can probably tell by the title of this video, um, a lot of you have already kind of figured this out. It's been announced in a few articles here and there and I've done some interviews recently. I want to tell you what happened because not only do you guys deserve to know, but one of the things I have prided myself on from the time I have started this YouTube channel six years ago was being honest and telling you guys the truth and telling you about what happened in my career, literally to the letter, good times, bad times, spraining my ankle before Aurora, you know, stuff like that, telling you about the health challenges I have faced. Um, and so I want to be honest with you today. And this is probably going to be a bit of a long one. I kind of don't even know how I'm going to go about this. To be honest, it's a bit daunting to me. As you, a lot of you have done your research, a lot of you have already heard that I am no longer a member of Miami City Ballet. Um, I did one season there after which, well, during which I began to realize that it was not the right place for me. And I want to go ahead and put this out there 100% to start. It was absolutely my choice. I was not fired. Um, I decided to leave. It was such a big deal that I got back into the ballet world and I got back after a nine year gap. And I am very grateful for the opportunity they gave me to be back in a company. Um, but very shortly thereafter joining, um, it just wasn't the right fit for me. And I think a lot of you guys know that I've talked about here before, um, talk about body image and mental health, and that's very important to me. And that took a, that was a huge part of one of the reasons that I left. And I wanna give you the full story, full of facts, and I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you. Um, now, all that to say, I know you're gonna ask, so I'm gonna go ahead and address this now. No, I'm not done dancing. I worked too hard for this. I actually had plans and I've been working on plans for a long, long time um, as to what to do now, um, but COVID got in the way. Thanks, COVID. So <laughs> I am not done dancing. I wanna go ahead and put that out there. But, so I know you guys were gonna ask. Obviously, obviously you can see by Instagram, I'm back in a studio and such. Um, things are still up in the air. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about it at the end of this video, but I wanna go ahead and address that no, I am not done dancing. This is just simply me, I was not in the right place. So going back to the beginning, I joined Miami City Ballet and I was super excited and they offered me the soloist contract. In an email, um, I was promised lots of roles last season. You're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this, great. I'm not a huge fan of telling dancers what they're gonna do at, at the start of the season in case things do change, in case, you know, minds get changed or whatnot, um, but especially not in writing. So, <clears throat> and, and then day one of the season, I'm on the board for Firebird. I have costume fittings for several ballets, like the entire rep for the season. I was slated to learn uh, the Wielden Potida Bitter Earth. I was slated to learn Tchaikovsky Potida. I was slated to learn Firebird, Sinatra songs. I'm old fashioned. Um, Mercedes and Don Q, like all of these roles. And I actually had costume fittings for them. Um, one of the leads in Stravinsky Violin Concerto. It wasn't just a, oh, I think you'd be right for this. It was, you're going to be learning these, you're going to have costume fittings. And typically if they fit you for costumes, you know that's, that's kind of a big deal because otherwise they wouldn't waste their time, honestly. So season started, um, I was hired the shape I was in. I knew I wasn't in tip top shape at that point, but you can't get into tip top shape until you're dancing full time. You all know this. You can't get into dancer shape unless you're doing six hours a day. So I actually got in better shape as the season went along. And so I started to learn these things and, and be in a lot of rehearsals and I did get in better shape. And as I've, I've, shown you guys footage on here. I've shown you different things. So I started learning Slaughter on 10th Avenue and that was my comeback show. I loved doing that ballet. No, it was not on point, but it's a Balanchine ballet. Like it's a very coveted role in the Balanchine repertoire. Like a lot of the big stars do it. And so, I mean, and you'll see me doing it here. And it was going to be on the same program as Stravinsky Violin. Myself and another very gorgeous, successful dancer, Stravinsky Violin is two women, two men, were going to be the leads in one of the casts. And oh yeah, we'll put you on, we'll put you on. And then right before casting went up, it was like, well, we don't think you're ready. We're only gonna do two casts. And it was sort of like a, 
kind of thing. It's just fine. That happens. You know, and I thought, okay, you know, just give me time. I'm happy just doing slaughter. So I, I did slaughter. I did my opening night show. And honest to goodness, guys, I will say that my, as I told you in the comeback, once upon a point, my opening night slaughter was a rock concert. I was applauded on my entrance. I was applauded at the end of the first pot of which is like in the middle of the show. You don't typically applaud that. Like throughout the night, I was applauded. So I knew the audience was on my side. I had people coming up to me at the end of the show. They waited at the stage door. Thank you so much for what you've done. You know, you're such an inspiration, which I hear from you guys all the time, which is an amazing thing to me. That's why I do this. I, I am on here telling you these stories and being honest with you 100% to be that inspiration and to show you that it's not always wine and roses and to show you the struggles I have had because Lord knows with the illness and, you know, I had a dream career for the six years I was at City Ballet and then it, I fell off the cliff and then the comeback and it was a big deal and I love being that person for you guys. So Slaughter went and it was amazing and I loved every second of it. And then we started on Nutcracker um, but also what was really interesting to me is we were starting the next reps and I wasn't called to Tchaikovsky Potida and I wasn't called to Bitter Earth. After the being told I was, after the costume fitting, I wasn't even called to learn them, let alone, um, do them. So sometimes what will happen is, yes, you're going to learn it. You're called to rehearsal and you don't get cast. That's a different story. That happens all the time. But to be told, yeah, you're going to do that, have the costume fitting, and then the rehearsal schedule went up and I wasn't even called, that's when I was like, hmm. So had a meeting and it was said to me, you know, that my body wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking my best. And I, I, and I, I thought, well, that's kind of odd because I, you know, I'm already in better shape than when you hired me and, and you know, for me, I, I was very honest from the start. Look, I am not the thinnest one in the room. Due to the illness that I have, I will never be the thinnest one on stage. That's okay. We want you to look the best that you can look your best. Fine. So it was a bit weird. But then the thing that was said to me, and this was about November, that I made me start to realize that I was already in the wrong company. And I quote, you know, I know you're supposedly this big inspiration for all these young dancers and for other people, but I don't really think you can be a true inspiration until you get back on the stage looking like a ballerina and doing a ballet in point shoes. So basically I was told that I was not an inspiration until I was a stick and I was not an inspiration until I was back on the stage in point shoes, meaning slaughter didn't count. A Balanchine Ballet in a top five company didn't count. So that was a bit of a slap in the face. And at that point, I called up Chris, who is my boyfriend, who at the time was still dancing with Ballet West. He's the first soloist. Called him up. I said, am I crazy? Are they right? Da, da, da. No, they're not right. Look what you've built. Look what you've done. You know, you, you just keep doing you. You already look better than when you joined. Da, da, da. So at that point... After that statement, as you guys know, one of the things about being a dancer is, and I apologize if I'm rambling, but I just want to give you the full picture of what was in my head. You're so fixated on pleasing the powers that be. You're completely like you live and die, especially me as a young dancer. I remember living and dying by what Peter Martins thought of me, what the ballet masters thought of me, what Sean Lavery at New York City Ballet thought of me. And it sort of at 31 was getting back into my head, you know, and I was like, okay. So then I started to fixate on my body and start to get back into those old mental patterns that I had nine years ago when I first got sick. Um, and then it took a toll on my body. My hair started falling out again. I started getting sluggish. I could see the symptoms coming back, being under the stress of trying to get into a look and to a the look that I know they wanted which quite frankly was very 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 small um and I'll be fully honest with you guys I am a size two this top is an extra small my jeans are a size two I'm a size two and I was considered far too large so 
at that point, I'm like, okay, I have to get into super uber duper shape, knowing full well in the back of my head going, Katie, you're, you have this autoimmune condition. That's never going to happen. It's going to backfire, you know, knowing that it wasn't possible. Tried to do it anyway. Well, we're in rehearsals for Nutcracker and I'm learning sugar plum, um, I, at one point I was called to do drop. I think they were like, oh, we're going to call you to do drop because I'd done it with New York City Ballet. It's Balanchine's version. Lead Spanish and Demi Flowers. Demi Flowers is a great part. I was very excited to do it because, not because it's some glorious part, but because it's literally five minutes of Brondalegro puffy. Like Demi Flowers is the hardest part of Balanchine's Nutcracker. And I was like, great. If anything is going to get me into the shape they want me to get in, it's Demi Flowers because it's like five minutes of torture days. So I was like, okay, so we, I started on Sugar Plum, I started on that. Firebird, we sort of still kept working on, but that was going to be for February, so we let go of that. We had started learning um, the second program, which I was going to do I'm Old Fashioned, which is a Jerome Robbins ballet. So we started working on that. And then I pull my calf in Nutcracker rehearsal, full disclosure, because I didn't eat that morning, trying to be the size that was required. So pulled the calf muscle, very frustrated, was out for the first mm, two, three, probably going to be out for the two first two, three weeks of Nutcracker. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't a tear. I was, you know, even the physical therapist said she could be back on the stage doing Demi Flowers or Lead Spanish or something by the end of Nutcracker. Well, it was almost like the calf was made to be a bigger deal. I felt it was made to be a bigger deal than it was um, just so that I... They didn't want to put me in a tutu on stage. So I didn't get on for Nutcracker. You know, I even showed you guys some rehearsal footage of, of me rehearsing a couple of things. And, and that was shortly thereafter I pulled the calf muscle trying to be smaller than I was. So Nutcracker went and then we were coming back for the third, second program, which was that Jerome Robbins Ballet, which I will include footage here. You saw me do some of that. Um which everybody said, oh, you're perfect for this, da 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 You know, even the repetitor who came to set it, who was one of my ballet masters at City Ballet, was like, you know, this is so up your alley. I'd love to see you on stage. You know, this is such your role. Well, I was only given one show, the very last performance on a random Tuesday. Fine. I was, I was put on stage for that. I was told I was still not in the shape I needed to be in for normal big performances. So I was kind of given the, the breadcrumb show. Fine, I got to do it. Loved doing it. It's one of my favorite ballets. It's beautiful. But at that point, I was already sort of like, okay, this is clearly not the right place for me. I'm not valued. I, they, you know, they wanted a certain look, and I didn't fit that look. Directors are absolutely allowed to want a certain thing. Um, they are. They're human beings. Everybody has an opinion. I did not fit that mold. My problem is that at a size two, I was told I was an embarrassment in terms of size. I was told that I would not represent the company in its best light. At light, and I was not an inspiration until I was on stage in point shoes, looking like a ballerina. That was my problem. Was the fact that I was trying so hard to get there. Which, incidentally enough, over New Year's, this is backing up a little bit, after the whole Nutcracker debacle, I went home to my doctor because I had started to feel weird because I would gotten into the weird mental state because I was trying to fit this mold. And I said to him, I was like, I'm not feeling, so we, I'm not feeling great. So we did blood work and he said to me, he comes back and he, goes, he looks at me and he goes, I don't know what situation you're in. I don't know what's happening because I really didn't tell him any of this. You know, it's a doctor. I just wanted to know medical numbers. He says, I have no idea what your life currently looks like. He's like, but your numbers are the worst they have been in eight years. He's like, so I don't know what's happening in your life, but something needs to change because you are going downhill fast. And my hair had started falling out again. I started feeling sluggish, um, you know, backfiring. And I wasn't eating much at all. It was not good. Um, I was having a really hard time maintaining the size I already was, barely eating. So I was like, okay, this is not, this is not right. So we get 
through Old Fashioned. I was given my one show, which I was so grateful for that. I, I was just to have it, to be honest. Cut to after that. We go back into the studio for Firebird. And my partner and I were the only ones who had been having rehearsals on our own. No ballet master had showed up at all. And at one point, um, there was a rehearsal in front of the entire board of directors, which was going to be the first cast couple and then myself and my partner. Um, and both of us, all four of us were called. It was going to be in front of the entire board because Firebird was a big premiere, it was a big deal. And in that rehearsal, in front of the entire board, we were completely ignored. We were not introduced. We were not looked at. We were not corrected. We were not thanked at the end. You know, dancers, I completely understand when you're in the rehearsal with in front of people and they want to work with one cast. Absolutely. They might not, they might only be able to work with one cast, but you still acknowledge the other dancers in the room. You still, at the end of rehearsal, thank the other dancers in the room. It's sort of common courtesy and politeness. Um, and we were completely ignored. And at that point, I was like, yeah, this doesn't look good. Meanwhile, through this, through the calf, through Nutcracker, through the one show of Olfax, I was on the cover of Dance Magazine, which was a dream of mine because I got to complete the trifecta, which I am so grateful for. I've been on the cover of all three dance magazines. Um, and I don't know if this is true, but off the top of the editor's head, she said, I think you're the only one. So what an honor. I mean, I don't know if that's actual fact, but that's what she thought at that, at that time. Um, that I'm the only dancer to ever be on all three, which is amazing. I was on the Today Show, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of you got to see that, which was incredible. And I got to talk about my story and my body, my body image um, platform and my illness. And so those opportunities um, I would not have had had I not been back in a company. And so I'm very grateful for those and to be able to speak out on a national and international level. The <clears throat> artistic was a bit, no one really said anything to me. So that was my other hint of like, okay, this isn't going well. So the day before Firebird casting went up, as I told you all in that video, um, I was told that I would not be doing it because I would not represent the company well. It was sort of the same story again. So by this point, it was February, and I had been on the stage four times all season from the start of August. I had been on stage four times. So at that point, after that meeting of being told that I was not going to be a part of Firebird, um, it's sort of, you know, and I did the video, which I'll link it here. I, I was still a member of the company, so I didn't really want to say too much more. But at that point, I knew I was done because I thought, you know what, no role or contract or title is worth the mental strain I'm currently under. What I'm trying to make my body do, which is in turn ruining my health because my illness is like back through the roof, the numbers are spiking, like hair's falling out again, like everything I had worked past, everything I had gotten through in those nine years was coming back simply because I was trying to fit this mold. And that's fine. Like I said, that's, that was artistic's preference. Fine. I didn't fit that. And no amount of wanting it or trying or, you know, just sort of trying. I wasn't eating. And I was, I was, I'm sitting there going, for what? And that's what I said in that video. For what? No, let me tell you, dancers. No company contract or title, soloist, such and such, soloist, whatever it is, is worth your mental or physical health. It is really not. And no role is worth your mental or physical health. It's absolutely not. You are worth so much more than that. You are so much better than that. That does not define you as a person. That is just, you know, something you do because then the role's over and then what? You are a human being, not a human dancing. So I just want to insert that there. So by that point, I, after that meeting, I called Chris and I was like, I'm done. I'm done. He was like, well, you know, other things have been in the works. And he's like, move out here. When the season's done, move out here. So that's why I'm in Utah. So, so Firebird goes. And in the same program is Nine Sinatra Songs. I was cast in that. Casting went up. 
I was supposed to do the second pas de deux, which is Strangers in the Night. I was really looking forward to it because it was my one and only thing to do for those, those weekends. So I'm cast, and casting goes up two weeks before the show. Two days before the show. My partner, who is amazing, by the way, he's lovely. The artistic tells me he has some sort of elbow injury and that they need him for the other ballets and they prefer he not dance with me out of fear that I will injure him more. So I said, well, can I, can I do it with the first cast boy? Because we have two days, remember me? Juliet, two hours notice, we had two days, eternity. Um, I said, can I do it with the first cast boy? I've danced with him and other things. Um, it would be, you know, it's not that difficult of a pas de deux. Like we can figure it out. We have two days. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. You're, you're, you're not going to be, you're not going to be dancing this part. You know, and he comes over to me absolutely apologizing because it's not his fault. He's like, I am so sorry. I, I, I don't, you know, and, and this was told to me in front of the entire company. In, in rehearsal, uh, there will only be one cast of Strangers in the Night. Katie, I'm sorry, you will not be dancing. The other first cast boys coming over to me going, I can do it with you. And just, they, they just wouldn't let me do it. So two days before, and I was cast, and I had friends coming to see the show. I had people coming to see the show. Um, I was taken out of that part and in front of the entire company. And I had principals coming over to me going, this is now ridiculous. Literally a dear friend of mine who was actually supposed to do Dog Q with, he comes over to me as a principal. He's like, this is wrong. This is now personal. This is some sort of weird thing happening. He said, this is messed up. So I ended up not doing Sinatra songs. I still had to cover it. I still had to go to all the shows. I still had to be in the wing and watch rehearsal, even though I was taken out. Meanwhile, we had another weekend of shows. So it was that weekend, I was taken out two days before. There was still 10 days before the second weekend. So I said to them, I was like, well, can I at least do the third weekend of shows? Because we have a whole week. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, there's no time. So that's when I realized, okay, this is, <laughs> this is now so not the right place for me. I, I will admit that's when I lost it. I lost it in that rehearsal. I had kept it together pretty much that whole time. But to be told in front of the entire company in rehearsal that I would be the only person not getting to do the shows. And I lost, I was supposed to do three, four, four shows of Sinatra. I lost all of them. To be told in front of the entire company to have everyone else get to dance was really hard. It was really hard. So I was struggling last season, you guys. I really was. And at that point, people were coming up to me going, this is, this is stupid. Like, this is so, it was so not handled well, no, 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 the whole thing. I was like, okay, clearly this is not, I'm not valued here. And that's fine. Again, I, I want to keep saying this because people have their opinions and you might not be that company's cup of tea. They might not like you in whatever role, but it was just sort of one too many times for me. So I decided at that point, um, I told them I would not, I said, I'm, I'm, my health is so down the drain now from all this mental stress, because that was like another thing on top of it. It's like two days before, like my parents were going to come and now I'm, I was actually cast and now I'm not there. It was, it, at that point, my health was so bad. I, I just said, I, I will not be I will not be signing my contract for next year. And then um, I was given the offer to, well, um, and I'm going to be totally honest. I was given the offer, well, you could take a leave of absence, and that way we can keep your name on the roster. Um, and we will keep your name on the roster. You can take a leave of absence for your health um, and then come back and join us which I sort of saw as a slap in the face a little bit because I thought you want to keep my name on your roster, but you don't want to cast me and you don't want to use me on stage. And basically a leave of absence is unpaid. So there was nothing really in it for me at that point. So that's when I said, no, no, I'm sorry that I, I need to, I need to focus on my health and, and leave. Um, I was supposed to do Mercedes and Don Q. I got casted as Mercedes and Don Q and then COVID hit. Um, and so I left. Um, and so that was my reasoning because you guys, it's, you might not be somebody's cup of tea and that's okay. 
but there's no reason for you to stay in a situation that is literally detrimental to your health and literally detrimental to your own mental state, trying to fit a mold you don't fit. Um, and so that's why I left. That is absolutely why I left. As I said, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be back in a company. I was a soloist in a top five company, but that line, soloist in a top five company, is not worth it to me to have my health go backwards after I conquered it after nine years. To have other dancers validate me, um, in, you know, saying this was wrong and, you know, and just everybody I've talked to, there are a lot of unhappy dancers in a lot of companies and I don't want any of you to be them. Um, and just to let you know, you guys, I'm not the only one that left the company. Eight of us left Miami City Ballet this season for various reasons. Um, and this was before COVID. Eight of us, um, decided to depart. Um, so it's a very real thing and I don't want any of you to be an unhappy dancer because the whole point of what we do is because it brings us joy. That's why you work so hard. That's why you give your life to this. It's why Olympians give their life to this and do their thing. And, and it's, but I'm telling you, you guys have reached a point in my life. I'm 32 now. It's not worth your mental health or your physical health to have my doctor Look at me in the eye and was like, I don't know what situation you're in, but get out of it. Was like, okay, <laughs> like, this is not good. Um, so I moved to Utah. I am now in Salt Lake. Things have been in the works for a while. COVID got in the way. I'm going to leave that there. But I do intend to keep dancing. This is still the second chapter of my career, and I am not going to give up on all the hard work that I did even if I have to do it on my own terms, which might not be a bad thing. To be totally honest with you guys, and I kind of want to like put this out there, if, if anybody's interested, my like shoot for the moon dream would be to do like, and this is a bad name for it, but like Catherine Morgan and Friends, where I would take, you know, it's like, you know, like, like Danny Albert has stars of American Ballet or these people, like I think Roberto Bolle has one. I mean, he's, he's got some big stars, but like Catherine Morgan and friends and we would tour. Um, I would love to incorporate local ballet schools in these performances because I remember being a young student in like New York City Ballet came and did a gala with us and we got to perform with them. So that's sort of like, I would love to do that sort of in the back of my head, like travel around with various friends of mine who are also, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and be like, yeah, I'm tired of my company too. Like, let's do this. So like, I'm sure I would dance with Sean Rolfson, who I've danced with a million things before. Like he's like on board. We have a list of rep that we want to do. And so I would probably include professionals and local ballet schools and we would do master classes. Um, maybe we get Chris involved, even if it's just to choreograph, because he, he did retire and he's like, I'm done. So <laughs> he, he'll be there somehow. Like that would be like the ideal situation for me because I could go around and meet a bunch of you and dance the rep I wanted to, but also teach and nurture and give back, which is sort of what I do on here. So if any dance schools are interested, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, so this is not like a tomorrow kind of deal. But if, if you want to make this happen with me, and if you have a better name than Katha Morgan and friends, you know, I know a lot of people have said, start your own company, but this would sort of be the start of that. And we would travel around and incorporate the local ballet students, because that's very important to me. It wouldn't just be like us coming in and dancing and having our one night and leaving. Like I would want to incorporate schools and the community and, you know, have a night because I rem I vividly remember that. New York City Ballet came and one year we did like fourth act of Swan Lake. We opened the program with fourth act, fourth act of Swan Lake and then they finished the evening and we all got changed and went out to the audience and watched. I mean, it was like the highlight of my life. And then there was like um, one year we did like our own little Carmen suite and then New York City Ballet did the rest of the evening. Like I just remember being a student and not only getting to see these dancers, but be in the show with them, take warm up class with them, see them backstage get to talk to them, like that meant more to me than watching them dance. And so that's sort of what I would love to do. So if anybody out there wants to help me make this happen, <laughs> let's get on it. I don't know how to do it right now, but I think that could be really, really special. And even Chris said, you know, he would go and like set a piece on the students or do a choreography masterclass because he's actually a brilliant choreographer, stuff like that. I have a ton of professional friends who have already said, yep, count me in. 
So I think that could be really a fun, positive, you know, because that's what I'm about too. I just, I don't think we need to make ourselves miserable over ballet. I just don't. Um, so that's the idea. Obviously, yes, company things are still in the back of my head. As I said, I've been in talks with various things. COVID, thanks. But, but that's sort of the idea, especially right now when the arts are in jeopardy. I would love to be able to travel and to bring arts to communities if they are losing their small company or whatnot, or, you know, with these younger kids, I just think that would be amazing. So anyway, that's the story. And I simply wanted to state facts of what was said to me, what went through my head and what actually happened. And to tell you guys that, yeah, I decided to leave. And I know a lot of you have been wondering for a while as I was off the website, um, but that's what happened. And I just wanted to be totally honest. And as always, you know, I, I think part of the reason that I, and God knows how long this video is, yikes. Um, <laughs> I don't think I could have shortened it though. Part of the reason I, I hesitated on doing this is because I know so many people were rooting for me to get back to the stage and were so excited when I got to Miami City Ballet. And I just, I didn't want to let you down, basically. I didn't think I was going to cry, but here we go. Um, I didn't want to let you down. And I'm sorry, but I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't stay there. I couldn't. It just, it was not good for me. So that's why I want to let you all know that I still want to be in this business. I just think at this point in my career, with what I've already built, which is amazing to me, I think at this point, I can start to do it on my own terms and use my name and do it in the way that I want to. And I'm very fortunate that I'm now in a position where I can do that. Um, I really am. And I, and I want to, um, just gotta wait for the pandemic to be over. Um, especially with the arts in jeopardy, I'd like to keep it up in the ways that I can. Um, so yeah, that's that story. Um, and I, as always, I thank you guys for your continued love and support. And I'm sure I'm going to get some comments that say, you know, you got to be skinny to be a ballerina. I, I know. And at this point, I've gotten those for the last decade. So I'm just letting them. You want to comment that? Great. Fine. Um, so anyway, that's that story. And I, I felt you all were owed an explanation. I just didn't really know what you were going to think. And being the people pleaser... I still struggle with that. Being the people pleaser that I am, I didn't want to disappoint anybody. But that's the story. I've been honest from the start, so I think it's important that, you know, you guys are on this road with me, and I think we're, we're still trucking. But I don't intend, as I've said, like, years ago, I was like, I'm done dancing. Not done dancing at all. Just at the point now where I'm going to do it on my, on my terms and not... Not, uh, it took a lot to get this hair to grow back, you guys. <laughs> this is all real. I don't even have any fake in. So that's really exciting. I wear fake hair a lot in some videos. Just part of the illness. But this is all real. Anyway, love you guys so, so much. If you missed the latest bar with no bar, that's really, really hard. Right down there, you can click it to watch. Love you all so much. Thank you, as always, for your continued love and support. I am not going anywhere. Still here for you guys. Um, and I truly, truly love every single one of you. Uh, so I'll see you next time.